Last year, we moved our entire SaaS company's website from Webflow to Framer. 300 plus pages, which includes blog articles that generates close to 50,000 unique visitors to the website month over month. 10% of this traffic converts into free signups on our app. Yeah, I mean, this is our company's lifeline. It's a big and tough decision, but we did it. Now, the question of why we moved was answered in a separate video we did last year and covers how basically Framer is just a way better option for design-led startup teams. But in this video, we're going to dive into a one-year review since Glorify's big move to Framer and how has it impacted our operations, SEO, and other marketing activities. Just before I get into it, if you're new to this channel, I'm Omar Farouk, designer turned startup founder. In this channel, I share all of my learnings around building delightful products and trying my best to achieve a breakthrough growth. So if you're interested in this, go ahead and click subscribe to stay notified. Now, nine times out of 10, moving any site to a new web builder will impact current SEO. We've seen this before when we previously moved our site from WordPress to Webflow about three years ago. And at that time, we had about 15 to 20% drop in our organic traffic after the move. This is despite making sure we ticked all of those critical items in the checklist. Website structure, content accuracy, external links, load speed optimization, setting up canonical URLs, redirects, the whole list. If it's helpful, I've dropped a link in the description of an article that breaks down this checklist in detail along with the SEO definitions 101. Now, anyone migrating to any new web builder should definitely do a complete risk assessment of whether or not it's worth potential risks of losing some of their organic traffic. In our case, we'd already built out a number of sites on Framer. And we were blown away by the speed of how fast we can go from concept to a fully responsive published site. So this decision was really about future-proofing our ability to quickly roll out beautiful pages and expand our site for marketing campaigns with zero friction. Now, of course, this is a huge benefit for us, but at the expense of our organic traffic, may be questionable. At the time, we had a lot of questions about Framer's ability to be bulletproof in terms of their SEO capabilities, which includes their CMS features, page load times across devices, ability to get crawled properly by Google, and a bunch of other questions. Valid questions since their pivot as a startup from being a prototype tool to a web builder was very recent. Luckily, their team was really helpful in terms of answering any concerns we had. Let's go through some of these answers that the Framer team had for us. From a technological standpoint, their code base behind their dynamic content delivered through the CMS or any static content seen in any Framer component is recognizable in Google. So they assured me that the site will be 100% crawled and indexed. Technical terms are saying that your site will be searchable on Google. The essentials were definitely in place for the CMS. For example, the ability to add custom fields, meta titles and descriptions, meta tags, alt text. This meant that we can migrate our blog content seamlessly with the same optimizations. And the best part about the CMS was that they were about to roll out their CSV import at the time, which would speed up the process for migrating 300 plus articles. In fact, in the future, we want to be able to build a template marketplace with their CMS. So the CSV import is a great way to publish templates on our site and ensure it's consistent with what we have inside our app. Until, of course, Framer releases their CMS API. Fingers crossed. In terms of the other SEO and performance features, there's many to take note of. Number one, you can easily plug in Google Analytics in their settings, but Framer also has its own GDPR compliant analytics built in, which is great for a quick overview of your website's performance. Number two, Framer automatically generates your sitemap based on your site structure. This helps search engines like Google crawl your site more efficiently. You can customize and publish URLs and page titles with one click and Framer will automatically generate new sitemaps. So these real-time updates ensure search engines have access to the latest information, improving search visibility and driving more traffic to your website. Number three, they've built in accessibility features to reach a broader audience, which is quite easy to set up. Number four, they also have server-side rendering, which means that Framer pre-renders your website's HTML and CSS as soon as you deploy it, resulting in lightning fast load times. And finally, point five, hosting. Framer offers reliable built-in hosting. You can connect your custom domain on paid plans or use a free Framer domain and just click the publish button and your site will be deployed in seconds. They use AWS, CloudFront, S3, and multiple load balance front ends with large in-memory caches to ensure your site is accessible from anywhere in the world with optimal performance. With all our technical requirements checked off the list, it was very reassuring to see other super noteworthy companies like Zapier, Dribbble, Lottie Files, and many others start to make the shift. The stars were definitely aligning for us, so we made the big move in May 2023. We had to move hundreds of pages with a fresh design, but what's mind-blowing was that it only took us three weeks. Now again, note, like I said, even with a solid migration process, we knew that our SEO would be impacted at least in the short term. But with all our due diligence and research, it was just clear that the long-term benefits outweighed the cons by a huge amount. Now let's do an analysis of where we're at now, which is just under one year ahead since our website went live. We'll be covering three parts in this analysis, operations, SEO, and marketing activities. Starting with operations. With a complete shift to 100% design-led on our website, these are some of the tangible impacts we've had on our operations. Now, in terms of what we're spending on Framer's uh, pricing plan, we're on the annual pro plan, which works out to be about 20 pounds or 
around $25 per month, which gives us everything we need. And so far we've noticed that we've saved around 85% of our time on delivering new pages and websites. On top of that, an additional $80,000 saved on the annual expenses on freelancers and agencies who we used to hire for previous web builders. We've noticed a 2x increase in efficiency to deliver marketing campaigns and a 3x efficiency of our app development team since they're hardly required to spend much time at all on our website. So huge time and cost savings all around. In fact, we reduced our team size by 50% since last year. And we really believe that Framer has to do with a big part of it because we've just simply been more efficient. Okay, now let's go through the big one, SEO. 40 to 50,000 unique monthly visitors to the website. Like I said, this is our company's lifeline. Now, we did lose traffic in the first weeks of migration because of various areas such as components with nested links, which impacted the time for our site to get properly indexed. At first we panicked as we saw almost a 50% drop in our traffic numbers, but this seemed to be more of an analytical issue, not an actual drop in traffic. So as soon as we fixed the errors after the Framer team pointed them out to us, by July, two months in, we picked up our traffic from where we left off. Since then, we have more or less been maintaining the same volume of organic traffic without actively publishing a lot of new content, which is great. Also, despite constantly adding new things to our website, we still hit top level lighthouse scores. Something to make note of if you have lots of blog pages. For us, we recently crossed our page limit numbers and that causes the site search to be limited. So we had to buy their add-on to allow site-wide search again, which costs an additional $240 per year. So overall, there's been success in our SEO. There's still things I'm observing as I've noticed some inconsistencies with our traffic data between Google Analytics, Framers Analytics and SEMrush, but this is quite normal with SEO and it could be for many factors as we're also running paid ad campaigns, which could also cause users to arrive through direct search. And we're actually in the process of improving our traffic data and end-to-end -end user analytics by integrating Google Tag Manager and Mixpanel with Framer. And hopefully I'll do a video on that soon. Now let's cover how the migration has impacted our marketing activities. The most powerful thing with Framer is we have been able to successfully deliver deal pages really fast. So whenever we want to test various pricing and discount codes, we can very quickly throw up a landing page by using existing components, link it to an external Stripe payment page where our developers do their webhook magic to process their account upgrades after purchase. With this simple process, we can deploy end-to-end -end campaigns within just a week now. It's a well-oiled workflow. Hosting webinars is a breeze since we can simply throw up the embed component and add any registration form from streaming platforms like Zoom or StreamYard. The same goes for lead capture. Currently, we use Magic Form's framework component, which can integrate with our email marketing tool, Brevo, and push our leads there instantly. The founder of Magic Form is an awesome guy. He actually specifically integrated Brevo for us when we requested it. The best part of this component is that it's got all the settings we need to match the design to our exact design system. Now, the most powerful part of moving to Framer is how versatile the CMS has become. They're constantly rolling out updates. In addition to our blog, the CMS has given us the ability to create a very sophisticated template marketplace directly on our site by combining two CMS collections, one for the template creators and another for the actual templates. There's a whole tutorial that Framer made specifically on this by using conditional filters, which is very helpful. I'll link that tutorial in the description below. Currently, our template marketplace page has one of the highest visitors volume, and it's an ideal programmatical SEO strategy that allows us to automatically publish user-generated content right on our site with all the keywords we need to attract the right customer. And this is just the first step for us. We'd love to keep exploring other ways to programmatically generate content through Framer CMS. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The only thing we need now is an API so that we can add more automation and even publish all of our templates that's currently inside Framer CMS directly on our application. And that's our one year review deep dive. To quickly summarize, operations, we saved around 18 to 20,000 dollars of quantifiable costs and almost 10x our efficiency team-wide by becoming design-led on our website ecosystem. SEO, we've maintained our organic traffic with minimum content publishing efforts. Marketing, we've launched two times the amount of campaigns than normal and built a fully functional template marketplace with huge programmatical SEO benefits. Honestly, Framer just makes me excited. Put all the technical stuff aside, our team just loves using it. It's probably the first web builder I'm genuinely excited to open up and start using every day. Now I know I might sound a little bit like a fanboy, but really it's just so much fun to use. So much so that we're actually considering moving our entire application design to Framer just because it'll be so cool to see a tangible tactile application on the web versus a flat prototype on Figma. Stay tuned for future videos where we'll be uncovering more about Framer as the backbone of your marketing funnels. In the next videos, I hope to speak more about the marketing integrations inside of Framer and even dive more into the programmatical SEO stuff too. But most of all, I'll be giving all of you guys an inside view of how our companies are progressing overall with all of these systems in place. So do make sure you subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you might like some of these recommendations next. That's it for now. I'll see you soon and make sure you never stop building.